There are people in the future who need us. We need a tenant. We need to save them here and now. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Laura. Congratulations on such a wonderful film. Thank you. I wanted to dig in on your character. You know, some probably will walk away from this experience thinking of Kat as kind of a well-kept, captive woman. And I think others will see her as a powerful, defiant character. How do you hope people view her and her story? I suppose as an actor, you kind of hope that the thing that you really respond to, the kernel that you really responded to of truth in the role is the thing that people take away. And for me, what I found really interesting about her and what I found authentic was the psychological journey she goes on. And I think that there are both elements in her. And I think that when we first meet her, she is captive and she is, she's almost a prisoner of her own thinking in a way and believing that she can't escape something and the circumstances being so imposing that she's become quite psychologically kind of uh, entrapped by that. And I, and I think what I really loved was the dichotomy between the persona she presents, the world, and, and the reality of her kind of trauma, I suppose. And then I love that Chris wrote into this particular genre a woman who goes on this journey and actually finds that she has agency and she can keep up with these male characters and she can find herself in a situation that she's not equipped for, but she finds this resilience and this ability to kind of go along with the thing. and. I really love that about her and I love that she she does become strong and, and I think the, the, the strength to me is believable. It's sort of psychological, if anything. Inversion. Name it and pull the trigger. You're not shooting the bullet. You're catching it. Oh. So the, the locations in these movies is, is stunning and they feel like their own character. What do you think the various, what, seven or eight locations brought to the film? Scope. I think it's, it's scope. And I think that the thing about the cinema, going to the cinema and what Chris gives us, and when I think about all his movies, the visual kind of feast of it, and accessing parts of the world that you would never have. And it's so timely as well, given that we've all been really in our living rooms for six months. It gives you access to this phenomenal globe and the different taste of all those different countries I feel like is really real and gritty and accessible on the screen. To do what I do, I need some idea of the threat we face. As I understand it, we're trying to prevent World War III. My first thought leaving the theater was, oh man, I need to see this two or three more times so that I can really start to catch all of the complexity and the plot twists. What was your first impression when you read through the script? Not dissimilar to that. I think that when I first read the script, I thought, okay, I've got it on whatever level I can get it on. I'm not a theoretical physicist. I think I understand. You know, I read it from, I read it actually sort of, because I'm not a science brain, I read it accessing the emotional kind of journey of the characters, I suppose, which I think maybe if I saw it, that's what I would be receiving. And the science would be something that, not unlike Inception, my relationship to Inception is me sitting down and thinking, I watched it in the cinema and I thought, okay, I definitely need to see that two or three more times. And every time I did, I sort of went, oh, a different layer dropped in. And I feel like that would be how I would watch this movie as well, to be honest, um, and have to ask people I saw the movie with what, happened there and what happened there but you know but if you were a physicist you'd walk out and you'd be like got it <laughs> well thank you so much for your time congratulations again thank you